constituted by the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, virtually, to the Goldendale City Council session for July 20th, 2020. We'll have a roll call, and we'll have ask Connie to. Julie. I'm here. Lauren. Shannon. I'm here. Andy. I'm here. Phil. Mylan? I'm here. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we have a quorum? We have four. Okay. We have four city councilmen on the line at present. Go ahead and take off your mask when you're trying to talk. You sure? It's easier. <laughs> Tonight we have four city council members on the uh, telephone. We may have the other others uh, join, but we need a, a uh, motion to uh, excuse those who are not here tonight. And we have that. Thank you, Shannon. It's been moved and seconded. That we excuse from attending this particular council session for two of our uh, council members. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Connie, the two that are not here tonight, Lauren and. Lauren and Phil. And Phil, okay. The next item on the agenda is to approve the agenda and the consent agenda. We need a motion to do that. So moved. This is Andy, I'll second that. Thank you, Andy. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda for this meeting and the consent agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. We don't have presentations tonight, but we do have a department report, and we'll go to our fire chief, Goldendale fire chief, Andy Hall. <laughs> Noah Hall. <laughs> Just sit still, Andy. <laughs> um, thanks, Mayor. So um, I don't really have that much. I just um, we're trying to get back into doing some trainings, um, trying to keep social distancing and stuff like that. Obviously, wildland fires. Um, are a good probability this time of year. Um, there again, we're trying to uh, minimize contact that way. Um, right now, year to date, our fire calls are at 122 calls. So um, it seems like our medical calls have been going up uh, quite a bit here recently. Um, and then we are in a busy time right now for wildlands. So um, yeah, so it should continue to rise from there. So good. that's all I have. Hope people will watch the the difficulties with how easily a fire can start now in this dry weather. The next item on the agenda is presentations. We don't have a presentation tonight. Um, we've had department reports from Noah Hong, our fire chief. There's no council business and there's no resolutions. The next item on the agenda that we have work is ordinances and we'll begin with critical areas and I believe Larry Bellamy will give us the details on that item. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> There's really nothing new to report on the ordinances that we've been working on here for the past few months. Uh, we've been through the public public participation process, ordinance committees met, the council has met, we've had our first reading, 
And now all we did from this last council meeting and this council meeting is to put it in ordinance format and adopt, adopt it for its, its uh, second reading. It'll become effective after it's been advertised in the paper. And so we do need a motion to approve the ordinance for critical areas. Is that the first one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, critical areas. Okay, critical areas is the first one. So we would recommend going ahead and adopting ordinance updating the critical areas code. So we need a motion to approve that and make it, put it in our code book. That's uh, 1502, Larry? 1501. Did he hear me? 1501. Are there any questions or comments from the council? Do we have a second? Mr. Andy, I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that the City Council of the City of Goldendale uh, has agreed that to ordain that Chapter 18.08 of the Goldendale Municipal Code entitled Critical Areas be and it is hereby repealed and replaced. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. She hadn't said aye yet. Okay. <laughs> so the vote's unanimous. The next item on the agenda is the uh, document on flood damage prevention, and Larry will also present that. Uh, this is the same process that we, these two have been running in tandem uh, throughout the whole process. And again, you know, we've made some, we've re reviewed the legislative format, we've reviewed the red light changes that have been made, we put it in ordinance format, and it is now ready to be adopted as well. That is ordinance number 1502 to repeal and replace 15.48 entitled Flood Damage Prevention. I move to approve ordinance number 1502, repealing and replacing the Golden Dome Municipal Code, chapter 15.48, entitled Flood Down Prevention. This is my one. I'll second it. Thank you both. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 1562-1502, repealing and replacing the Golden Dale Municipal Code, chapter 15.48, entitled Flood Damage Prevention. Any discussion or questions before we vote? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 The vote is unanimous, and it is adopted. Thank you. That concludes the council business on ordinances. We'll go now, but we don't. Yeah, we do. Report of officers and city administrator will begin with Larry as usual. Okay, I wanted to report to the council I, the status of the financial picture for the city of Goldendale. We're look, reviewing reports that bring us through June. So we're looking at statements that we're looking at percentage numbers on these statements of about 50% because we're doing it through the June 30. So we are looking fairly good for most of the revenue categories. The property tax, retail sales, and utilities tax, which makes up the, most, the bulk of the current expense fund, are all about 47, 49, 53. So they're right there where they should be. 
Uh, fines and penalties are a little down. They're at 31 uh, percent. Motor vehicle excise tax is down a little bit as well, given the fact that people aren't driving as much, and we're starting to have the effect of COVID-19 beginning to be realized in, in that category on city streets. But even more so on hotels and motels, whereas we should be looking closer to 30, 40, 50 percent, we're down at 27 percent. So, uh, but at, at the same point in time, we are not having as many uh, events that we're paying for and advertising for. Uh, so we should be fine in that category as well, even though it is uh, going to be less this year than what we had budgeted. The water and sewer averages out at about 51 percent. So we're looking good there as far as the revenue picture goes. On the expenditure side, uh, pretty much the same story. Uh, the general fund, which includes your judi judicial, finance administration, legal services, law enforcement, fire department, administration, those all add up to be about 46 percent of their budgeted amount. Uh, we're doing a little less work at city streets, so that percentage is down to about 30 percent. Uh, once the COVID-19 stuff begins to lift, we might be able to get down and do some more work in the, in the street, street end of things. Parks is about 40 percent, and then like I said, tourism is uh, down a little bit. It's only been we only spent 25 percent. We're still doing some Chamber of Commerce things uh, for the most part. Everything else is event related and probably, uh, especially community days, we didn't have a lot of expenses going out on community days. Then water and sewer, again, it averages just like the revenue at 51 percent. The expenditure side is about 51 percent as well. So overall, I'd say we are looking pretty, pretty good with a few minor exceptions. I'm, I'm happy with where we are sitting at the moment with regard to our finances on the revenue side and on the expenditure side. Thank you, Larry. Are there any council members that want to report uh, information from this last two weeks? Mayor, this is Andy. I have uh, two things I want to ask about. Um, first thing is, I noticed that some of the plants on um, the poles have gone down. Is, is there a reason behind that? The reasons, do you have some comments? No, I was going to talk to you about that. I forgot. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have been trying to do our darndest to keep those plants uh, healthy. We have been saddled with temperature decreases and temperature rising, like we're down in freezing weathers and then we're up into the 90s. And they're full of aphids. And <laughs> they are. The other, the other issue is they attract aphids. And the third issue is the wind has just been unrelenting. And so some of the plants were just not going to recover being kept out in the weather. So we took the ones down that we didn't feel we we're going to be able to make it and are trying and taking them back to the shop and trying to nurse them back to health, see if we can't re reset them. But it's been a okay. it's been a tough year with all that going on. Okay. Uh, next thing Larry, I think this is gonna be a question for you also. I have a friend ask me if there need to if someone needs to place a, a complaint for fields that need to be mowed or yards need to be mowed or, or weed control, um, who do people contact? They contact either Shelley or Jeff Raley in our office. Shelley Enderby okay. or Jeff Raley, either one. And if we do receive okay, if we do receive complaints, that's we'll take action on those immediately. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Andy. Any other councilman? Mayor, this is Milan. Uh, I, I stopped oh, about a week ago. I talked to one of the gentlemen that were watering the plants, and he told me the same thing that uh, 
the aphids and the windy weather and, and also he felt that maybe the waters, uh, they weren't getting enough water. They were watering it, but they had the plants, but it was leaking through uh, the pots. And so he was kind of patching them up and hopefully that would help out. But maybe it was too late to, to save those uh, uh, plants. Uh, one other thing, uh, are we going to go into executive session? Or? Not tonight. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, I guess that's all I have, Mayor. Thanks, Mylon. Any other council members with something they would like to add? If not, We'll go on to uh, remarks by the mayor, and I have uh, some bad news to give. It, it arrived today. You'll see it in the paper probably this week. Um, if you remember, we had, we're in phase two, and we had made an application the county had to go to phase, to go to phase three, and we were very excited about that because it would mean we could have larger meetings and a lot less restrictions. Well, that isn't going to work. We've received notice from the State Department of Health that seven of those counties asking to be moved from phase two to phase three, those applications have been returned. And it'll be several weeks probably before they'll be reconsidered and they will have to be uh, re-prepared, re redone uh, because of changes that will take place in the next uh, week or two. So we're not going to move as fast as we thought we would. There's not a thing we can do about it. But uh, it's something that we need to be aware of, that, uh, that this type of changes, we need to expect this as more than we do, probably. And the other item, I participated in a webinar today with uh, Governor Inslee, the State Secretary of Health and the State Public Health Director, and they talked about, and along with the uh, state staff as well in this category, about how to coordinate action on COVID and how to deal with the situations now. And it seemed all in all that uh, it was not a hopeful picture. And the reason is, even though we're low in, as a state, consider we had a pretty rough start. The thing is, these COVID spikes are beginning to happen in different states at different different uh, intensity. And it, probably within the next two to three weeks, we'll start seeing that spike start up again in, in Washington State. So we were just there watching it. We will do everything we can uh, to help keep that away from us and be able to uh, get back to normal quicker. But uh, it was a very good webinar. I've got a lot of details on it, but uh, but it wasn't wasn't the most hopeful news, sadly. But there there was a lot of uh, praise for the efforts that our local citizens throughout the state are making to, to mask up and to social distance and to maintain the hygiene uh, guidelines. The thing I think uh, we need to realize is there's been a a mutation in the COVID virus, and it's not um, its not necessarily more dangerous than it was, but it is far more contagious than it was, and that's a change they're seeing right now in our state. So be even more careful about distancing and avoiding anyone that has, is sick, or uh, make sure you wear your, your mask, because uh, you're going to find a, a, a real shock if you learn it. You were the person that gave that virus to someone else unknowingly, completely unknowingly, but it happened. And that would be a real heartbreak for anyone. So we need to get really serious about this. I know we have um, a good healthy crop of conspiracy theorists, but they just need to shut up, get out of the way, and let us go on and get this done. And that's my report. Do you see any indication that we have public comment people on the Yes, Roger, the rest are the council. Roger, did you have anything on public comments you'd like to say? 
only to congratulate you on uh, leadership in tough times. Everyone there is doing an awesome job. Thumbs up for me. That's very kind. Thank you. I'll put my mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't have further public comments, I will ask for a motion to adjourn City Council for July 2020. So moved. Second back. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn City Council for July 20th, 2020. Uh, our next session will be on August 3rd, and uh, it most likely will still be a virtual meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>